So it seems to be this uh, growing trend uh, in the fitness industry where getting into shredded, extremely lean uh, condition is sort of as a, is seen as a bad thing or potentially unhealthy. Um, and it seems to be sort of swimming around in industry circles, typically by trainers or coaches or people who've left the industry and now become fitness business coaches uh, who have never really got in shape themselves. Um, and are looking for a way to sort of justify potentially why why that's the case and why clients and people in general population shouldn't be doing the same either because it can impact their mental health it can uh, screw with their eating behaviors their food patterns etc we obviously have a different stance to this um given some of the the benefits that we see uh, in our members when they get take themselves to the absolute extreme and we also know as as a coach as coaches the importance of going to the extreme because if you haven't been to the extreme yourself and you don't take yourself to the extreme on a semi-regular basis, so every couple of years, then you know, you're going to lose touch with what, what that is. You're going to lose the empathy required to push someone to the next level. And also, more than anything, you lose the, the standards that you hold yourself high to um, if you're not regular, regularly sharpening the axe and sort of feeling how that feels on a regular basis. So I thought it would be interesting to discuss, you know, end of the year, um, most people are thinking about their fitness goals for 2023. For many people, it may be getting you know, getting into the shape of their lives uh, is top of the agenda for next year. So I want to use this podcast to explore why it's so beneficial, what the pitfalls are, uh, where this dieting culture has come from, and where where you need to maybe look look out for as where it could go wrong. Because you know, it can absolutely go wrong if you don't do it correctly. So yeah, let's kick it off. Where, where has this all come from? And we'll start with Ivan just because uh, he's written a recent article on it discussing this yeah so it's definitely a topic that's been grinding me for a while um and yeah you're, you're right it's it's stemmed from a lot of people and i wouldn't even say coaches or or trainers actually i think it's actually stemming more from people like registered dietitians they know more about nutrition than anyone in the field and i completely agree you know i think their knowledge around it is fantastic but there's just seems to be this massive push especially here in Australia where, um, yeah, it's all about, you don't need to lose weight. You know, don't dieting is bad. Dieting culture has only told you that you need to lose weight. Otherwise you're not worthy this and that. And I think it's been, I understand there's as, as with all these things, there's definitely a grain of truth, but I also think a lot of it has been extrapolated. I think a lot of it's been exaggerated to the point where, you know, now, now we've got the whole, yeah, healthy at every size. You know what I mean? You can be overweight and obese and still be metabolically completely healthy and live a fantastic life. And, and the research just shows that is not true, you know, and it's the same on the other, other end of the spectrum, you know, the, when you're, if you're too underweight for too long, you're also going to run into health problems, right? So this whole, just accept your body for what it is and this and that. And again, I think there's a lot of merit to that. I think, yeah, you should accept uh, your body and you should love your body, this and that, but you should love it enough to actually want to make changes and improve it in a way that is going to benefit you for the rest of your life. Um, but yeah, it, there just seems to be this massive push. I know we are biased because a lot of the stuff that we do, we, again, the physical is the vehicle. We have a heavy, and it's not just because of what we believe, but we see this with everyone that we work with, right? People who achieve a fantastic physical transformation, if done properly, which is going to be the key in our entire conversation here, is can literally be life changing in such a positive manner. You know what I mean? The amount of transformations we've seen, the, the amount of transformations that we've um, sort of facilitated, just proves that. You know, we don't need a research paper to tell us, hey, people who get in, into incredible shape do seem to do really well in other areas of their life. You know, so to sort of hit back at that and go, no one should be dieting. Dieting cultures, this is creating eating disorders, it's creating mental health issues, it's creating social comparison stuff, this and that. And, and when you look at the stats, yeah, a lot of the stats are quite crazy. You know what I mean? Many people do develop eating disorder tendencies, this and that. But when we, when we really step back and we take a look at how these things develop, fundamentally, these things develop because you've approached the entire process all wrong. These mm. same people who are promoting dieting culture to be this evil devil thing never got in proper shape. Like, and that's not that's not me trying to be rude. It's just like you, they've never achieved any sort of like I don't know any any 
uh, what's the right word? Supremacy when it comes to body transformation. They've never achieved anything. They've maybe tried and they failed. Um, they maybe they themselves ran into some issues, and now because they ran into some issues, therefore everyone they work with is now going to run into dieting issues and you should never diet this and that. So I think it has stemmed a lot from that side of things, you know, and it's, it's potentially mm -hmm. coming from a good place, but as with everything in the fitness industry, I think the pendulum has swung incredibly far the other way. And I just, it's just really pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> so when are we going to where, where, how does this go wrong? How do it, you know, people might be listening on a body transformation journey they may not know if they're doing it right or wrong. So let's go maybe what's mm. wrong and then we'll go into how to actually do it properly. So in fact, you want to kick it off with that, where it goes wrong. So I think where it goes wrong is, oh, I think there's probably a lot of different places, but I think the the best way to avoid things going wrong is to to get advice from from people who who do know what they're doing. And you know, I know on Instagram, everyone looks like they know what they're doing, but the way I would be judging it is, is looking at looking at their content, whether that's client results. Um, so not only like quality, but also consistency of those. Um, and then just finding out more about the the practitioner or, or the company and going from there. Now, obviously, we're biased. We think R&T would be the place to come. Um, but you're, you're probably going to need some kind of guidance um, along that, whether that is with the, the X's and O's of what, how you should be setting up your nutrition, how you should be doing your training, et cetera. But then also how you actually implement that into real into the real world because first time i try to get in shape i already had enough knowledge of nutrition and training and everything from that perspective it was more the how do you implement it into the world not only to get it done but also to remain in a good place to then progress on after checkpoint and i think that's actually a lot of the people you guys are referred to so far in terms of like failing or not getting in shape it's not being able to, some of them just don't get in shape in the first place, but I think a lot of them get into shape, but then have issues afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's that's a really big part of it, which I think often when we sign up to these things, we neglect. You just think and want to get those abs, want to do that photo shoot, whatever, but also looking beyond that and seeing, you know, if you are going to work with a coach or a company, what, what are their clients doing three months, six months, 12 months down the line after that as well? Because normally it's the post diet experience that leads people into thinking that diet is not not a, like an appropriate thing to do for most people i think mm. and i think a lot of it comes from not having a game plan like you mentioned but also potentially going too aggressive on the way down where you you almost crash diet your way into losing weight and this is why i think a lot of people don't get to that that point of of shredded or if they do get there they've just got there in such like you're going to have to make sacrifices and it's going to have to be unsustainable but when it's just so unfathomably un, uh, unsustainable it's just, it's impossible to do it properly you know when you hear of like going straight in at thousand calories because you want to you want to suffer or you want to diet hard or you want to motivate yourself by eating very little food then that's where you can set yourself up for failure very quickly because you know what's going to happen, that the hunger levels are going to build up. It's impossible to maintain that level of willpower and discipline for more than a couple of weeks, which is why for us, you know, we, the grind is probably no longer than two to four weeks because after that, it just becomes impossible to sustain. And if you are going to sustain it, you're going to crash, you're going to come crashing down at some point. And that's where the big rebound happens. So I think that's another area where people can go can go wrong quite quickly. Yeah, like you're completely right. They take these extreme approaches and whether, yeah, whether it's super low calories or people just, oh, I'm just going to start skipping meals and I'll just start losing weight, you know, or yeah. that, that's the thing. They, they approach it with like this shotgun, this shotgun approach really. It's just, I'm going to slash all my calories or, you know, I'm going to cut out carbohydrates completely. Or I'm going to cut out whole macro group. I'm going to do intermittent fasting. They just go all guns blazing, trying to use all these methods and, and yeah, they simply just burn themselves into a crisp. And then what happens is they go on these crash diets um, they that are too restrictive, that are too that are not inclusive of, um, you know, they've got the same five, six foods for six, seven months. That's the plan, right? Because every other food outside chicken, broccoli, rice, and um, eggs or what tofu and whatnot, they're, everything outside of that is just, you know, fattening, right? So they, they put all these crazy restrictions on themselves. But again, it comes from, uh, a lack of education also comes from a lack of patience and yeah, just a lack of a real game plan. This is where, you know, experts in the field with a proven track record, not with just themselves, but with people who 
uh, you know, have who are not the best genetically as well. You know what I mean? People who are just everyday people looking to get in shape that, you know, if you can do it with th- those sort of individuals are the ones who need a plan, they need education and they need structure for an extended period of time for, for them to accomplish this goal appropriately. Because yes, if, if not done again with care, if not done with consideration, you are going to run into problems. And this is where we see, you know, we get so many people come to us years and decades of yo-yo dieting you know what i mean mm. and that yeah they come to us and like yeah, yeah dieting has really just you know messed me up over the long term well no it hasn't because if you were dieting that whole time you technically would be rail thin you know so you you haven't you haven't been dieting for 30 years you've been attempting to diet for a couple of months every single year you know <laughs> you know what i mean so and the approach is just incorrect and i, I think when people mm. approach it in a really bad way then yeah, you can run into all these potential disordered eating patterns later down the line. But um, with with getting into shape and with getting into crazy condition, but also more importantly, being able to sustain that, that that is that is a skill that must be learned, and that is you need a lot of tools in the toolbox to be able to accomplish that feat. And that again, simply you just cannot do that on your own. Like, I don't think you can. I don't think anyone trying to you know read online, follow something, do this, do that. Without proper accountability, without proper guidance, and without proper care for what's actually going on, you, you got no, you got no chance. You know, it, it's like us. Uh, I think I made this example in the in the article. If it's just us buying like a McLaren tomorrow or a Formula One car, and expecting to to drive it out on the road, you know, it's like well, we've got no, we've got no perception, we've got no idea how to drive this crazy supercar. So if we crash it, is it the car's fault or is it our fault? Well, it's our fault because we didn't take the time to actually learn how to drive this supercar. So mm. it's the same principle applies to what we're trying to do here. You know, like what you're trying to do with your body is, yeah, very, very similar to that, trying to drive a high-performance car. You're not going to blame the car. You're going to blame the driver when, when shit goes wrong. Yeah, I think the other area where people go wrong is dieting but not dieting. And this is what you sort of <laughs> mentioned where yeah, yeah, you think you're dieting but you're actually not dieting. And this can cause people to, to go... Be can cause people to go crazy right it, it can drive you mad where you just say you, you're always saying yeah i'm on a diet but your body weight's literally been stable for the last six months or worse it's actually going up um that's that we hit that a lot right and i think this is why uh trying to have your cake and eat it before you get into the best shape of your life just never works and we never really see it work where people dip their toes into a transformation or they are oh, i'm just going to work on steps this week then next week i'll add a workout in Next week, I'll work on my breakfast. Then I'll work on my dinner. By the time you got you got there, you're probably not going to get anywhere. You might drop one, two pounds, but then you're, you're not bought in by the process. And when you're not bought in by the process, you lose confidence in it and you decide to do something else. Or worse yet, you just don't build any momentum. So you just stand still. And then you're just in this like perpetual, you're not in, you're not out, you're not getting results. And I think that can drive people mad. And they just think, oh, dieting doesn't work. Or dieting made me feel like this. Whereas if you just get in, go all in, get in, get out and work on a sustainable plan to keep it afterwards, then you can reap all the benefits of what we've described as the physical transformation to be the vehicle for all other areas of your life. But that requires sort of plunging yourself into the pool rather than just dipping your toes. Yeah, 100%. Because I think another really common example is, all right, I'm going to make some changes. So I'm going to start going to the gym, but then they're not willing to as you said, really dump into the pool and maybe change how they socialize. So then you're blocking out all this time every week for the gym, you're putting in this physical effort, but you're still undoing it in terms of kind of weight loss because you are you haven't changed how you're socializing. And however, if you start dieting, you go into fat loss phase, some level of restriction, it's just going to have to be there. It's just, there's, there's no way you can remove that completely, right? So if you accept there's going to be a level of restriction, it doesn't have to be mental at first, but there's going to be a level of restriction. If you just commit to that, you can make that time period of restriction shorter and really effective in terms of results. Or you do what we've just been chatting about there. It's just drag it out for a really long period of feeling restricted without even getting any physical results, which is just like it's the worst thing, worst thing to, to be in. And it all comes from just not committing, going full it, all in on it, basically. 
Yeah, it's a, that's a controversial one, but I agree. You know, it's and again, like a lot of people love the whole no, 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 just let's just work on steps this week and then work on your water intake next week. And you know what? It, it sounds really nice on paper. It sounds really nice when you're presenting it and people hear it. They're like, oh, wow, this person understands me. They understand. I just want to take it step by step. The thing is, though, when things are too easy that way, yeah, you're right. You don't, you don't adapt the identity of someone who wants to transform. That takes ages because you're still like, you know, like oh, I'm not working on my nutrition this week. I'm working on that in like four weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you start, you, play, you start, yeah, that's the thing. You start playing these stupid mental games with yourself. Um, because yeah, I, I don't think many, many actually do take the approach we do. And I think that, that our results speak for themselves when it comes to that. You know, you can talk about habit mm-hmm. formation, this and that, to the cows come home. And yeah, I see, it, I see it all the time. People start, do seem to. I think how much you take on, it it shouldn't be overwhelming, but it should be a good amount, right? Because we've also seen potentially the other side, right? And people go, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go all in, going to go all in. And then when one thing starts to sort of go wrong, then it's just like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm nothing now. I'm just going to start again the following week. So there's there's that side of it too, right? So that's actually probably more common than in, in, in what we see, it, you know, with our members where they exactly, struggle with exactly. like all in or nothing. Without they come in like Correct. ready, and then like one thing happens, it could happen in the first week, could happen in the first day, it could happen yeah, in three yeah. months in, and then it's like nah, nah, it's like exactly. Well, I have to, I've got to wait for the clearing now. You know, I got to wait for the clearing, and this is the biggest thing we struggle with, right? Um, and mm. it's the biggest thing to really get your head around. And I think if you are going to take that step by step approach, the only one to really focus on is nutrition. Like if you are going to say, oh, I'm just going to focus 100%. on one thing, it's going to have to be diet. Like let's be honest, you can't you can't yeah. out train a bad diet. Yeah, we hear that all the time. And when it comes to losing body fat, diet is number one. It's like it's it has the biggest impact. Always. So if there's anything you are going to focus on, it's going to have to be that. But that's at some point you're going to have to add anything else, something else in, because otherwise, mm. firstly, you're not going to lose, you're not going to keep your muscle mass if you if you have much, or you're not going to build any muscle mass. And secondly, is you're gonna um you're just gonna have to drop your calories, you know. So yeah, it's gonna have to happen at some point. Yeah. And I think it's important to potentially define what we say when define what all in means. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. all in is more of that mentality, if that makes it's, sense. It's, it's like all in on the process, not the plan. It's the way I see it anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, because I think exactly what I meant. The, the, yeah. the people who drop off when a kid gets sick or something, so they have to miss one day of steps, they, they get 9,000 instead of 10,000 one day, and they're like, oh, fuck it, I can't stick to my nutrition now, I'm just not going to check in for three weeks because of a basically 1,000 steps. You know, that's being all in on a plan. Like, if I can't tick these exact boxes, but that's not what we're saying because in that situation, let's say you've got work goes crazy or your kid's sick, we can adapt the plan to make it realistic for you during that time. Maybe it means pulling steps down slightly. Maybe it means backing off on cardio for that two weeks or whatever it is to to ensure you can still remain all in on the process. And the process is ensuring that your health and fitness remains a high priority. You're still taking care of your self-care. You are implementing like nutrition and activity protocols that fit with you and your lifestyle and your goals at that time. That's what's going all in on the processes. You can literally have work going crazy so all you can do is one all-out set of each body part it's like a little 20 minute circuit training session two times a week and you're buying food on the go maybe it's like microwave rice like pre-cooked chicken if that's what your plan is at that time you're still going all in on the process like the, the, the actual plan will look different for everyone and it will change over time as goals and things progress you've got to remain all in on the process another element of the process is an engagement making sure that you're keeping yourself accountable to checking in daily making sure you're reflecting on things weekly communicating with your coach these are the things that all get encompassed by that that all in approach um, which will ultimately allow you to to get the results you want life is meant to be in the way you just got to you just got to take the responsibility and find a way through it so when you know when things happen it's not screw it i'll wait i'll wait till everything clears up it's just finding a way around it I think that's exactly. the biggest, if we think about uh, the people we work with, you know, it's it's the general population. They're not robots. They have multiple priorities, all competing for their time. It's it's how do you get around that overwhelm? And it is, like Ed said, it's just, getting, it's just being all in on the process and just find constantly troubleshooting, constantly creatively problem solving, how you can work around 
whatever's going on in your life because there's always going to be something. Yeah, 100%. And I think that's and, where the confidence yeah. comes. You know, when we talk about people getting confidence from physical transformations, I don't think it's the fact that they're suddenly walking around with sport with, with, with abs or a hard stomach or whatever it is. It's the confidence knowing that no matter what happens, they can do something and they can take a step forward when life gets difficult. I think that's where the confidence and the character building really comes from. Because it's hard, right? It's hard to take yourself to the absolute extremes of body composition. We've all been there. And it's even harder when you know life is throwing challenges at you. And I think that it becomes it means even more when you can when you can do it despite that. You realize how much of your life is in your control. Now, loads isn't, but I think one of the most the most freeing and liberating feelings is just realizing how much is in your control, how how good you feel every day, how much you can impact that. And then also the confidence that you know you can do what you need to to make sure you feel good you look good etc um and i think body fat isn't even related to that well not it's completely not but being ripped it's not a feeling you can only have when you're ripped because i still have that now for like 10 probably about 10 11 kilos above photo shoot condition at the moment i still draw on that confidence subconsciously daily i know i do and actually think about it um but you know i'm, I'm definitely not shredded right now yeah, it's a really good point. It's not the it's not the removal of body fat that gives you these things, right? It's just the the removal of body fat is more of a, more of a proxy, right? Because you know we we've always said this, and we'll probably touch on this a little bit later. But yeah, one of the biggest benefits to getting into incredible shape, and regardless if you're gen pop, yeah, people like life. If you if you're if you're not a bodybuilder, you don't need to go to the extreme. Technically, that's true for the physical side of things, but what it does for you mentally and mm. emotionally, and it just makes you uh, it makes you a better person. It makes you just more yeah. resilient. You know, that's the benefit of of all this. What what we're doing here with regards to physical transformations is is the, the physical is the vehicle, literally, to to fuel all of these other positive traits, so you can become uh, a productive member of society, right? And and yeah, that can come. From the the reason that we use a physical transformation, in my opinion, I'm sure you guys would agree, is that it's that it's it's one of the very few things left in this world where you cannot buy. You know what I mean? Yes, you, you can pay a coach. You can pay a coach to do this and to keep you accountable. This and that. But technically, you cannot buy that transformation. You must do the work. And that is a beautiful thing, right? Because mm -hmm. you have to work for it. You cannot hide. And the, another great thing about that is when, yeah, when life does happen, stress comes into your, in, into your day, this and that, you cannot, you cannot cope or you cannot resort back to food to cope with those issues, right? You must deal with those issues head on. And again, I think that skill, if there's one skill that anyone takes working with us is that they actually learn how to cope with their problems without crutches. You know what I mean? They yeah. tackle problems head on. They become, they have this growth mindset where they look for ways to overcome this. They see it as a challenge. They don't just retreat into a little corner and, you know, start binging on a ton of food when no one's looking. You know, that's that's not the sort of behavior that we want to be encouraging, you know? And, and in our opinion, this is where that the whole transformation really shines is because you can't do those things when you are getting yourself to the extreme. You can't, you, you must, you must deal with your shit. You cannot just hide your shit. Otherwise it will be exposed eventually. This is why we talk about orchestrated suffering in the grind. It's like you're orchestrating an experience for yourself to see how much you can take. And I think we all draw on that even like in a, for us now outside of just fat loss, we draw on it with our own training in, in some form of way. Cause I think that's probably why we're drawn to physical challenges because it creates that constant level of orchestrated suffering where you have to dial in all areas of your life. I remember like I was, I think earlier this year when I was like, I think a week out, I remember sitting and I was on my third black coffee and I was, <laughs> and I was sitting there and I was like, that's a crutch, oh, crutch. I know, right? <laughs> I was like, how much, how much pain can I tolerate right now? And I know it's like, it's not the right way to think, but I was just thinking like, if this is this is like how shit I feel right now, it's like there's nothing that can make me feel worse. As like, if I can just carry on my day feeling like I am feeling right now, I, literally anything can be thrown at me and I'll be fine. And I think I, I put like, I think I've got a good level of resilience in in life generally, and I think that's come from just extremes in bodybuilding. Because when you just when you do that to yourself, it's just you know those last few weeks it is literally just it's self torture, isn't it? To an extent, at that extreme anyway. And when you're willing to do that to yourself, I think. 
it's very few things people can touch uh, can can inflict on you that would make that would feel the same another huge thing actually i i've taken from it i think is is one of the the big benefits is just your level of ownership and self awareness over what matters to you and your priorities and then how that links to your actions um and this is something i'm i'm really conscious of actually on a daily thing i think about it a lot but just how much our actions are are dictated by our own priorities and it can be quite a hard one to take at first to actually take ownership of that and i think when uh when someone does take ownership of that it's actually it's a bit scary at first but really like liberating because you realize that you what matters to you is what you're going to actually prioritize and I think sometimes it can be a bit of a, uh, an eye opener as well because I think we've said before everyone says, "Oh yeah, what are your top three priorities?" Everyone's like, "Oh, family, health, work." Like it's normally always that, and then it's like you actually look a bit deeper, and if you actually do reflect, it's like, "Well, oh, actually, um, that isn't how I'm prioritizing my time or my energy or anything like that." And what's so special about the grind is that your resources are so depleted. So in terms of your time is probably depleted because activity level is probably going to be fairly high. You're not going to quit your job during a grind. So you're working, you've still got your family commitments, but now steps are probably as high as they've ever been. Cardio is as high as it's ever been. Um, you're having to meal prep. So the amount of like extra time from a time resource perspective is limited. So how you then choose to spend the, the rest of your time is a really big indicator. Your mental capacity, um, by that last period, you're having to focus so much with, you know, high levels of fatigue. What you used to, what you used um, your mental, that limited mental capacity on, says a lot. Your physical capacity, just because you're you're fatigued, recovery is not going to be in an amazing place with calories low, expenditure high. Again, like that, that's really going to highlight what do you actually really care about. Because you you might have the weekend, whereas pre RNT or pre dieting, you used to do ten things across the weekend. You know, when you're really pushing hard at the end, you're like like everything you know it seems quite daunting you're like all right well there's only i can feel i can only really commit to one thing right now like what what is it is it going to be taking your kid to the park or is it going to be playing the guitar or what whatever it's going to be you then find out what actually really matters to you i think when you then go into a consolidation investment phase you can use that information to structure your life around what you really want because if the guitar is really important to you let's say you're never playing it you, you're gonna you know you can reflect on that and then actually make sure that you're you're implementing something that you do really care about or you know you say your kids are really important but you only see them for half an hour on a Sunday like you can reflect on that and then actually start to to adjust things to ensure you are living in line with with what your priorities actually are the key is when you actually have the energy you make those changes and you don't just let those insights and ideas that you had in the grind just sort of pass away and become a, a long lost memory you actually have to take action on it. And that's where you can really transform your life. Uh, and, and that's why we say you transform your body to transform your life. I think the priorities and value and priorities thing is interesting because, and, you know, priorities and values are very similar in terms of, you know, what they represent. But I think when people are struggling with their crutches, it's often because they're not living in tune with their values and they've misaligned their priorities. So their values might be, let's just say, like you put health, work and family. Reality is it's probably not even that. It's the, you know, these values are usually different to that. Um, but their priorities are those three things, but their values are different. So they've, they've set their priorities as these sort of things, those three things you mentioned, but their values are, I don't know, playing the guitar, uh, physical health and uh, music. Or, or this. <laughs> but because their life is so different, they need crutches to get through their life. And I think that's where, if you don't make those changes in your life to fit with your values and, and match the values and priorities together, that's where incongruence happens which is when you start beating yourself up inside using crutches looking elsewhere gambling whatever all the other things that come with it alcohol drugs so you've really got to look at this and this is really difficult right to to redesign your life especially when you you get to your late 30s and early 40s and you've accumulated a lot of baggage and you don't want to change things but if you don't change things you're just going to be spinning your wheels on the same treadmill for the next 10 years and it's very easy because most people don't ask themselves these questions of like what do i actually care about because it's like they might might be scared what they actually find in that answer, and they realize they're living a life that's completely different to actually what they want to do. Mm, yeah, a really good example of that I think is people you know often who come to us will have health as quite a high priority or a perceived priority. But what you can then ask yourself is like when you are in social situations or in stressful situations, 
what are you actually prioritizing your actions? Because I think loads of people say, oh, I'm pre-diabetic, it's massive health, you know, it's a big, it's my why, it's a priority, I want to see my kids grow older and all this stuff. Then you get to the meal out with your friends and then the, the, the actual priority in the moment is avoiding social awkwardness or getting social, like not mm. having to, not having to deal with being questioned or being the odd one out or, or having to say anything like that. And when you actually step back, it's like, well, actually, I care a lot about more about living longer, better quality of life, seeing my kids grow older than one awkward moment at a meal. But when you're in the moment, what do you actually prioritize in that moment? And, you know, if you do go for the pint and, and the burger and chips, it's probably because you've actually just wanted to avoid a 30 second, slightly awkward interaction with a friend or you're having to say, oh, actually, I've started this diet or, I've you know, changed how I'm eating or whatever it is. You've avoided that. But as a consequence, you've prioritized that over your health. That's actually heartbreaking when I see that. You know, when I uh, when we read through people's whys, because we can, you know, in pro, we can see the reason why people join. And when I read it and I, I see stuff like that, where it's like, I want to live longer to play with my kids and all this. But yeah, I haven't seen any change or they don't engage. I'm just, that breaks my heart when I read that. So I'm just like, it's just all talk and it's all fluff. And if you really wanted to do that, you'd be all in on this because it will completely change your relationship with your kids and it will allow you to actually play with them in your 60s, 70s, 80s with energy, without joint pain, without muscle pain and actually have the the, the ability to do so. And I think that incongruence is like, if anyone's listening to this, it's probably like a key exercise to just think about. But the hard thing is you've got to, you've got to ask yourself these big questions, but with big questions come big answers and they're probably more big questions. I had a friend of mine um, yeah. over the other week and I said to him, you know, he was he was talking about his work um, as a doctor and he was saying this, that, basically just complaining about it. And I said, like, dude, what do you actually want? And he was just skirting around the question. I was like, okay, what would be, you know, he's talking about his girlfriend and then moving and all these things. And I was like, all right, you know, in 12 months time, what would be a re- good result for you? Like, you know, where would you think, oh, it's been a really good year? Just like skirting around the question and we never actually got to an answer. I was like, oh, look, your homework, I'm going to hold you to account this. Like, you just need to ask yourself, like, what do you actually want in your life? Because you have more in your control than you think you do. And, you know, just simple things like he wants to move in with his girlfriend, but it's like they're different cities or he wants to work one less day in, in the NHS. But, you know, all, all these things. And easily, I, I was listening to him like, you could literally do this all in the next three months. But... He never sat and actually thought about it. And I messaged him a few days after. You started thinking about it? He's like, yeah, I just, I realized in all these years, I've never actually sat and asked myself these questions. Never actually asked myself, like, what do I actually want in life? And what do I actually want my day-to-days to look like? And uh, I think it's more common than we think. It's very easy mm-hmm. to sort of let life, life go by um, and just live life by default rather than crafting what you can. Now, of course, we have... Um, benefits or flexibility in our work, right? I think that adds a lot of, um, that, that's a big bonus for us. At the same time, even if you are trapped by an office in a commute, there's still a lot of things you can control and a lot of things you can still live your life in terms of your values. So it's a useful exercise, but it's, it's the one that will change your life if you live by it. It's obviously the yeah. hard bit. On, on that, what you guys were saying earlier, and it was... Um... I was going to mention it when you started talking about it, but one of the most piercing quotes I've heard in recent times was you are a 100% reflection of your commitments. Every, all of us, you know, what we are, how we look like, what we do day to day. It's all a reflection of what we are truly committed to. Simple. You know what I mean? And once people actually start to realize that and they see that, you know, you, you can say that your oh yeah, health is this and health is that, but it's just like, but it's not. And there's, there's nothing wrong with you admitting that, but I think bringing awareness to it first and then being able to take action is, is key here. And for anyone that is listening, we have a fantastic article on our website. Um, I love referring a lot of our members to it. It's the, the HILPS, the HILPS test. That's what it's called, right, uh, AV? I uh, highly recommend anyone, um, you know, once you got off listening to this fantastic podcast, go on the website, check it out, and um, you will gain some incredible insights into what you actually value not what you mm. think you should value, which is the key because people are even, you know, I think if you haven't never thought about this sort of thing, you don't know what you value. You think you value this because your friend said this. So you, you, you copy yeah. what other people value. You copy other people's why, but that, mm. the, the, and what, what I, what I have seen is that when you're, when you don't know what your values and priorities are, 
I, what I've seen in, in practice is that adherence to the plan, getting into the shape of your life is never going to happen. It never, ever happens because when your values and priorities truly align with the person that you want to be, you don't even have to second guess if you go out for a meal and a friend offers you this, you go, no, no, I'm good. I'm going to order what I want. That, and again, that, that sort of mindset does take a lot of time, but when you really think about it, when you truly value and prioritize health and wanting to get to become the best version of yourself, there's very little second thought when it comes to those sort of decisions, you know, in my opinion. But yeah, many people are simply just are unaware of what they actually believe, what they actually value and what their priorities are. And you need to start there. Otherwise, you're, you're going to spin your wheels forever, in my opinion. I think you also need to um, break down health. Like just saying health is my priority. I think it's too wishy-washy. <laughs> there's too many parts of health. Yeah. There's mental health. I just want to improve my health. fitness. I want to improve yeah. my fitness. There's so <laughs> much aspects What's that mean? to it. Yeah. I, I think like, it comes down to what you said, sorry, though, with... um how your mate answered the question and this is so so common and it's actually it's i think we're the minority and i find like it's if most people lack the ability when asked like these hard questions or pressed on them to actually give a defined answer and so it's exactly what you're saying they're like all right health or fitness and then you're like okay so what does that mean or like what's actually the plan and it's like oh i'm probably just gonna like start doing a bit more activity it's like what does that mean like whereas if i asked one of you guys it'd be like all right, well, I'm going to train three times a week. It's going to be full body sessions. I'm going to do them at six in the morning on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I've got my gym membership. This is the program. Like, It's so actionable, which is so different to being like, yeah, I'm probably just going to start going to the gym a bit more. Like, We know without a plan, one, there's going to be no structure, but like, there's no accountability. There's nothing to hold yourself accountable to if it's just like this, this fluffy thing. Hmm. Um, so it's what you said there, you're yeah, 100% around, just like you can't have a fluffy answer. It needs to be re- like really clear, really actionable, not just so you have direction, but so you have accountability, whether you work with a coach or not. Like Even if you don't, you know what you should do each week. And at the end of the week, you can clearly say, did I do that? Did I not do it? Sometimes you won't do it. There's going to be valid reasons, whatever, but you can have a clear yes or no. So you know what you're doing. You know if you're actually doing what you said you would. And the reality is you can only really have three priorities. Any more than that, you've you just got a to-do list. Like it's just, it's just not going to happen, right? You can't have eight priorities in your life. There's not enough time in the day. So you've got to be really, you get, you get what you focus on. So you've got to really identify what those priorities are and then just live by it and, and be very specific with it. And then they'll turn those priorities will then turn into goals and then targets for the week and the day and et cetera. But it always it all starts with like firstly, what do you want? What do you value? Then it's like, all right, where's the priorities? And then it's like, okay, this is how your day and week's gonna go. And if you live like that and you live intentionally, you'll you'll just enjoy you'll enjoy life more. It's really hard for a lot of people, man. It's really, really hard to, you know, even envision like a future self, you know, and we and we we talk about this more in um, you know, the content for our year two members, but yeah, if future thinking, being able to plan ahead, it's a very, very new concept for us as individuals. Like back in the Savannah, we didn't need to be thinking about retirement or thinking about mortgages and whatnot. We just had to be thinking about, okay, are we going to die today or not? Like hopefully we're just going to get enough food so we can survive. So that whole way of future thinking is very, very difficult for, for us now. You know, this is why I think in America, I can't remember the exact stats, but, you know, the 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 amount of money people have – tucked away for retirement is like non-existent for like almost 50% of the population, you know, because they just don't, they can't see that far ahead, stuff like that, you know, and the same, the same thing goes for health and fitness. You know what I mean? It's very, this is why uh, I know that if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to be dead at 80 and I'm not going to be able to play with my kids, but that's 80 year olds me problem. Not my problem today. You know, one more burger isn't going to do that, you know, because that burger right now, you're not going to feel the effects of that burger in 30 years. You know, that's the way your brain sort of operates, which is which is bad, but this is why you need to sort of intercept that. And um, yeah, think of the person that you want to be and then reverse engineer that. What's that person doing differently to what you're doing now? And that's the exercise we like to use with a lot of our members. And yeah, the more you can do that, the more you can solidify that. And but yeah, keep yourself accountable to that person that you want to be. You're gonna you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna have a much more enjoyable time um achieving your goals. But that takes work. That's hard. It's hard mentally to do those things. And if you're listening to this thing, yeah, I know my priorities. Or I already know my values. You don't. You, know, yeah, you don't. Like you probably don't. <laughs> Honestly, you probably don't. And yeah, you like I said, your life becomes a reflection of it. So 
that really double down on it. And you might be wondering why we're talking about this. And I think it all stems back to the whole point of getting shredded. When you get shredded and you go all in on the process, you're going to learn these things. And then on the other side of the equation, learning how to stay in shape is very much to do with this. You know, getting in shape is physical, staying in shape is mental. If you can fix all these areas of your life and live a life by uh, the way, live a life by design in the way you want it to, in, in accordance with your values, you'll find staying in shape very easy because you won't have crutches. You won't need to use food to get you through the day and think, oh, am I gonna, how am I going to get through another day of X, Y, Z? Because that's what you've got to commit to. And also be okay with your priorities, not you know, fitting the social norm. If your priorities are, aren't your kids, that's okay. You know, if you don't feel guilty, if you, if your, your top three priority doesn't feature your kids or it doesn't feature your wife, or it doesn't feature your work, that's okay. Just, just accept it and, and, uh, and, and be okay with it. And I'm saying that's a lot of where uh, people go wrong. It's like, oh yeah, these should be my values. When you're answering that helps. There's, these are what I should, these are what I should write down. This is what I should write down. But in reality, it's not. And I'd throw health into that as well. Like health, fitness, like we obviously see huge value in prioritizing it and, and, and valuing it. But I, the main issue I see is like circling back to the start of like people having bad relationships with dieting or like fitness experiences. Like it's probably just because the 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 actions that you're having to do just don't seem seem worth it for you. Or maybe you're not in a place to to do that, or maybe that the trade-off just isn't worth it for you in terms of like is getting X amount more leaner worth what you have to put in. So whether it's restricting your food more or doing more activity. And like that is okay. Like not everyone has to be ripped or whatever, but just set your expectations in line with that. If you're not willing to make your fitness so let's say health fitness like a top three priority don't expect to get into photo shoot condition that's that's like an extreme of body composition same way like if you're not willing to make like a strength training thing like don't expect to bench press 150 kilos or whatever it is like just set your expectations lower like if you're not willing to put your work as a big priority don't expect to be the ceo of facebook or like some massive company like all of these things if you're coming if you're off to Martin Zuckerberg, <laughs> yeah, like if you're only willing to half ass them, then expect half ass like yeah. progress, which is okay. Some areas of life, like we don't have to be amazing at everything, but if if you want to get amazing results in health and fitness, it's going to have to be a top priority. And if you're not willing to it for it to be, that's okay. But just don't, don't don't expect it to be the case. However, the good thing about health and fitness and why you should prioritize in your top three is because it's probably the only one that if you double down on that, it will impact all the other ones that you have very very highly so even if you're not willing to put it as your top three priority let's say your top three priorities are your are, are your career your family and you're playing the guitar well health and fitness is going to make you better you're going to be have more energy to play with your family you're going to have uh better energy at work and you're probably going to have I don't know what better coordination. Guitar. That's true. Better coordination. It, it, there you go. Improve, better coordination. It, it, and improves your cogn- it improves your cognition, all that stuff. So you'll you play go. the guitar better. So everything's <laughs> everything in your life is better. So if you're not willing to make it a top three priority, but you know you need to do something about it, because if you don't, in the next 10 years, you're probably going to have a heart attack or you're going to have some serious health issues and it's going to come back and bite you, or you just want to feel better on a day-to-day basis, then you need to link it to your top three. So you know, link how right. will health and fitness improve my career? How will health and fitness improve me playing the guitar? And that's what can get you through the short term of getting a transformation. And by then you would have seen how it's impacting your top three priorities. And you know, for those top three priorities to be at their best, you need health and fitness to, to be working in the background. So it may not be extreme goals after you get in shape, but it, it becomes a maintenance goal where it allows it feeds your top three priorities in life. And that and that and that's another way to, to sort of play the game. Uh, if if you're not willing to make it a top three priority for the rest of your life. What we've seen though, is that when people are bitten by the bug, eventually health yeah, and fitness sure. does become like a top three priority. And then it just makes, it makes everything so much simpler and easier. Yeah. Any closing sentiments? It's going out just before the new year. So it's the perfect time to impart some final words of wisdom. I think my, my sentiment would be that if you've had um if you've lacked success in a diet in the past i wouldn't just paint dieting all with the same brush the approach you took the method you underwent whatever it is that didn't work that didn't result in success but it doesn't mean fat loss or dieting doesn't work um and so potentially it's just time to now reroute and uh and go with an- another way 
but yeah, it's darting is not not all the same thing. There's good, there's bad. Unfortunately, there definitely is bad, but just because bad didn't work doesn't mean there isn't good out there to, to still achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. And I would say um, nothing is more educational or inspiring or it's going to get you to change than an actual body transformation. You can you can read about things, you can, I don't know, watch movies about certain things, this and that, but getting into the shape of your life is something that you need to really experience to truly understand it and then let that um, what what happens in that phase? What happens in, in during that time? I think can be extremely transformative in all areas of your life. And yeah, I just can't stress that enough. I think it's one of the most. Uh, again, as I said earlier, it's that one of the very few things in this world you can, you you, can't, you cannot buy. You simply have to work for it, and the insights and values you gain from that experience is um, second to none. And what we've seen having transformed over three thousand lives in twenty five different countries, there tends to be three keys to transformation success so long as you've got the right blueprint that's commitment consistency and coachability and if you want to see how you benchmark against those three keys um and and see if you're ready for a serious transformation in 2023 take the scorecard at www.rncfitness.co.uk forward slash transform and in 40 questions 40 yes or no questions you'll understand if you've got what it takes uh to use the physical as the vehicle to transform your life Hope you all have a great Christmas and we'll see you in the new year.